live from New York. It's your Yu-Gi-Oh! News, news Gio, with your host, Davinator1212. Good evening, I'm Davinator1212, and this is your March edition of news Gio. The last couple months in Yu-Gi-Oh! have been rather quiet, mostly due to some extenuating circumstances. It seems that the unbanning of tribe infecting virus may have had some unforeseen consequences to the general health of the world. Due to this viral outbreak, the news cycle has been rather slow. However, uh, here at Team News Geo, we decided that we are going to do our best to still provide you at least a very educational fake news geo. So without further ado, this is March 2020 and your top stories. Due to the viral outbreak, it is not just sporting events that are cancelled. Yu-Gi-Oh, YCS, Regionals, WCQs, and other various sanctioned events are on indefinite hold until at least May 1st. A new ban list was just recently released for the TCG, and many of the hits are definitely centered around the release of Christron Hal Christron Hal Needle Fiber. And last but not least, with all IRL Yu-Gi-Oh! events on indefinite hold, the only real way to play sanctioned Yu-Gi-Oh! is online with things like Duel Links or the Switch game. All of this and more on tonight's News Gyo. The outbreak of COVID-19 has definitely hit the Yu-Gi-Oh! community rather hard. Going to locals to practice is pretty much nigh next to impossible, as well as even going to the store in order to buy the new, uh, that box thing with the needle fiber in it. What is it called? <laughs> However, there are still some things that us Yugi players can do. Dueling Book and YGO Pro are certainly good options for you to be playing real full Yu-Gi-Oh! if that's what you'd like to do. With the new Master Rule 5 being implemented pretty much when this video comes out, Synchros, Xyz, and Fusions will all be unlocked from the extra deck and able to be played as they were in Master Rule 3. So if you want to stretch your summoning condition legs, one of these two services may be just for you. Here at the News Geo Network, we do not condone uh, in-person IRL testing, simply because y'all gotta stay home. For those of you who do find yourselves in public and then come home without washing your hands and then touch all of your Yu-Gi-Oh cards, we move on to a special segment with our social distancing champion and field reporter Tommy with how to keep your Yu-Gi-Oh cards spick and span and disease free. Take it away, Tommy. Hey guys, being a superintendent at my job is no easy task, but luckily I have the know-how to help you clean and sanitize your most precious possession, your Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Step one, you're going to take your deck, right? All your cards, and you're going to unsleeve it. Step two is you're going to get a few simple products, some antibacterial hand soap. I happen to have Dawn, which works as a hand soap, and some bleach. Bleach of any kind works good. I'm using a Clorox cleaner that I have available. You're gonna need a microwave, you're gonna need some steel wool, and you're gonna need a large bucket filled with about a half gallon of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and unsleeve these cards, and we're gonna get right back into it. All right guys, welcome back. So I've unsleeved my entire deck here. When you unsleeve it, take the sleeves, throw them away. Sleeves hoard the virus. You're gonna go ahead, take your bucket that you now have full of water, and you're gonna add into it half a cup of your antibacterial soap, and you're then gonna add your bleach. If you're using a spray bottle, half the bottle. If you're using cup measurements, you're gonna put about two cups, three cups worth of bleach. Be liberal, it is perfectly fine. While you're at it, you know, just bleach yourself, kind of bathe in it. You're gonna go ahead and take your deck, you're gonna submerge it, all of it, card by card, into this bucket of water. It is imperative that you do this and make sure that every single card is thoroughly, thoroughly front and back submerged in this liquid. Then you're going to take your steel wool, you're going to dip that into your solution here. And once again, front and back of the cards, you're going to go ahead and scrub them on the steel wool. This the virus isn't going to get me, I swear it's not. Nope. Not me, not on my watch, 
not my cards. Uh, make sure you get the extra deck extra good. You then go ahead and give them a little ring. Most important part, I apologize. Most important part, right afterwards, you need to nuke them. Worrying about the virus, I totally forgot. Nuke them for about two minutes. Soak and sanitize, scrub the life out of your cards, and then microwave them. Do not go outside for anything. Oh, they're done. They're nice and steamy. Can you see the steam coming off of those? Those are ready. Those are good, clean cards. I'll see you guys next time. Thank, thank, thank you, Tommy. Okay. Well, next we now move on to the only actual official way to play any sanctioned Yu-Gi-Oh! And that is with Jason in the Duel Dings Corner. Take it away, Jason. What's going on, Duel fans? It's your boy Ty Wolf, the friendly neighborhood super beast. And I welcome you to this month's edition of the Duel Links Corner. Jason, where are you? Are you like in a bunker? Where, where am I? I'm home. You know the company's policy. We all have to practice social isolation. Why would you? Can I go back to what I was about to get into? Y yes, sure. Go for it. Thank you. Well, here at the newsroom, we take the state of emergency very seriously. And all the cast and I are doing our parts by practicing social isolation. Now, there aren't many positives to being in social isolation. But the one that does it for me, that I don't have to spend any time with a particular little brown virus. And all I can say is, how sweet it is. Aw, oh, hell, Daddy, why you gotta be so mean? Motherfucker! Yeah, uh, sorry, Jason. He is technically just a puppet, so he can be in the studio with me. That's fine. As long as you keep him way over there. But I feel like I should warn you, him being made of fabric means the moment someone calls on him, he's going to be contagious for like four days. So you can take that risk. I'm fine where I am. Oh, uh, hell, you mean you got to work from home? I mean... Technically, we don't have to do all that. All we have to do is pretty much dip you in some bleach. I'll be just like Michael. Yeah, but at least then you'll probably stop calling me daddy. All right, daddy. Please continue before we get any more derailed. I didn't say you can call me daddy. With the release of the last two sets, the March ban list and a particular set of erratas for a bunch of skills, the tier list has gotten shaken up. Dropping from tier two to tier three, we have Black Wings and Dark Lords. We got Cyber Dragons and Lunar Lights begin to see much more play. Holding strong at tier two, we got Dark Magicians, Shiranui's, and Thunder Dragons. And rising to the top spot, we got Chris John's Element Sabers and the return of the Blue Eyes. Damn, we just couldn't keep them boys down. <sighs> now you might be asking me, why is this important? Well. Truth be told, in the next couple of days from recording this, the KC Cup is back. So if they are going to host any nationals or worlds, pretty much the only thing not hindered by COVID right now is the Duel Links Corner. Now, like I told you in the beginning of the year, we're going to look towards the future. So I'm not going to explain any events that already previously happened or tell you more characters are coming back in. But what I will tell you are the top cards you can look for coming up in April. First, we got Gravekeeper's Visionary. Now, it was released earlier, and we've seen a certain character use it, but now we're going to have it for ourselves. Then we got Gaia Drake the Unstoppable Force, a cheeky little fusion for collectors only. Then we have Wandering King Wildwind, Chains Clothes, and Majestic Star Dragon. Keep an eye out for those. Those cards are pretty much once every now and again, so get them while you can. And here at the Duel Links Corner... We cover electronic games. I figure I'd take the time to inform those who don't know about the legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution update. With this release, we received more than 10,000 new cards that were released throughout the TCG as a whole for as far as January this year. So for any of those trying to stay competitively viable, make sure you pick up your copy of the game because not only is it for the Switch with the update, but they also updated the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys next time. Dave? All right. Thank you, Jason. For the final story of the night, we move on to our banalist analysis expert, Ryan, to go over the recent released TCG Forbidden Limited list. Ryan. Thanks, Dave. Obligated as ever to be here. It's nice to make you do this. Given the latest list, how do you see the current format shaping up? 
Welcome to Who's Meta Is It Anyways? The format with no events and a ban list doesn't matter. That's right, the ban list is just like Dave's social life. But on to more serious stuff. The new ban list goes into effect April 1st, and no, this is not an April Fool's joke. Konami is using this to kind of pave the way, if you will, for a new format of no events. However, we did just get Needle Fiber, or Halka Fibrax, or Hella Fibrax, depending on, on if you think that Q is silent or not. We did get announced some Deep Sea Diva support, so the Deep Sea Diva also got uh, got released a little bit from the list. That's kind of cool. Mer Merlantians, I guess, would have gotten a pretty big boost from this. Like I mentioned, Needle Fiber, is now in the TCG, so they kind of had to take the synchro spam and dial it back just a little bit. Uh, for a while now, we've had three Trish. That hasn't been a problem in Master Rule 4 because nobody can get three Trishes on board. Kind of the same idea, the re reason Omega is at one, now Trish is at one. In addition to that, we did lose a few tuners, including Glow Up Bulb. Spiral has finally released its grip on Magician Souls. Now that card can finally go down in price. It was pushing well over 100 for a while because people were playing it in spirals. But with Master Plan gone, not a big deal. Instant Fusion also went down to one. Should all invoked kind of got hurt, but I guess if you're searching out the one copy, it's not a huge deal anyway. Clearly, Konami is trying to push the new sets, Secret Slayers and Eternity Code, because up until now, we really haven't gotten anything cool. Nothing that makes a splash. Uh, I guess Plunder Patrol, because they're water. But again, this all just kind of seems moot because we're not going to any events. They've canceled all of the YCSs, all the regionals. Uh, until this coronavirus gets under control, I think we're going to be stuck in our basements for the foreseeable future. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go wash my hands again. All right, Ryan, thank you for all of your efforts. And that is all of your stories for tonight's News Geo. I hope you enjoyed them, despite the fact that the outlook for the next couple of months, as far as Yu-Gi-Oh! is concerned, are at least going to be a little boring. I have been Davinator1222, two two. this has been News Geo, and good night. Well, 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 look who's back. Be sure to subscribe to the channel this time. Or I will use my Millennium Rod and do devious, devious things to you. Evil things. Also, by the way, Bakora never did ever get that milk. I did get the bloody milk. No, you didn't. This is oat milk. It's not real milk. It needs to come from a cow. How do you milk an oat?